Welcome to Coco and Daltz. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Daltz. And on this podcast, which is hopefully the first of many that you will listen to, download, and patronize our many, many sponsors that we are sure to have <laughs> down the road. Once we get tens of listeners. Tens of listeners, <laughs> not including relatives, <laughs> former colleagues, and convicts. <laughs> Convicts. Convicts. <laughs> We're big in the convict market, apparently. I okay. They got to download something. They got to do something with all that time. They work out. They work they? out. Yeah. That's what the TV tells me that they do all the time. Did we know. do? I'm not Coco. We did. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what is the podcast? Uh, what are we? What are we designed to do here? Coco? We talk about hockey culture and life. Oh, I love it when you do that. <laughs> and you know that hockey is actually a good metaphor for life. So they're they're is all it? interjoined there. How's that? Well, sometimes you get all your teeth knocked out. <laughs> I, I really hope that never happens to me, actually. <laughs> well, Metaphorically nice or otherwise. Well, I spend a lot of money on them. So thank Do you, you really? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't tell you that? I, maybe you did. Okay. Yeah. I won't bore our listeners with my dental history. So. I didn't realize you could spend a lot of money on teeth. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Look at my bank statements from like <laughs> eight years ago and you'll see otherwise. <laughs> okay. So this is our year end... <laughs> Uh, edition of the podcast. If any of our tens of listeners are still listening, right. after they're like that. dental. Dis- <laughs> I'm not talking about dental stuff. Right. Um, so, because this is our first podcast, I think it's a good opportunity for us to look back on all the things that happened in 2017. Maybe some discoveries. Maybe some things that we liked. Some things we didn't like. Uh, tell me, Coco, what did you like about 2017? Well, I was actually not a very good consumer of culture in 2017 because I did kind of get my teeth metaphorically knocked out over the past 16 to 18 months. So, But you look good. Oh, thanks. Well, you're, you're obligated to say that. <laughs> but, but thanks. I appreciate it. Sure. So I could probably count the number of movies that I saw in the theater on one hand. Mm-hmm. So uh, I Spider-Man. don't really have... You saw Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Yeah, we saw Spider-Man. We saw The Founder. We saw... Kong Skull Island, uh, yeah. I think there's one more that we saw, and that's probably it. I saw Coco. You did. You saw theater. Coco. Yeah, my namesake. I did, and that was actually a very good movie. I went by myself. I don't have any children, so I went <laughs> so, without children. So you were the pervy guy no. sitting. <laughs> yeah, I should probably change that. I actually ha- do have children. I went there legitimately. I wasn't some bad dude sitting there watching, <laughs> sitting in the front looking back. Stranger danger. <laughs> Um, Coco was a good movie. It was a lot better than I thought it was going to be. It was good. uh, It was about the afterlife, which is always good for kids to, you know, (laughs) good entertaining uh, moments for, you know, seeing skeletons uh, dance around and things like that. Uh, The way one of your children described it to me, it sounded very difficult to follow, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. She described it as difficult to follow or her description was difficult? Her her description was long and involved. So maybe it was just her description. And if I had actually seen the movie... I would think otherwise. It's about a kid who uh, sort of visits the afterlife, but he doesn't die. Mm -hmm. But he's got to reconnect with people, and he's got to find the truth about his lineage and his heritage. And it's very involved for uh, a kid's animated movie. It was was no uh, Finding Dory, let me put it that way. Oh, you've seen Finding Dory? We watched Finding Dory the other day. Oh, okay. And it's essentially about... (laughs) an absent-minded, uh, short-term memory challenged fish. Oh, that sounds like me. Right. I thought immediately of you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I couldn't remember your name when I was watching it, though. But <laughs> Finding Coco. Yeah. <laughs> but I think we're a little bit off track here. So yeah. Yeah. This. What else did we like about 2017? Um. Well, so this was the year that we actually joined. Um, like 2012, and we got a Netflix subscription. Yes. So we've been hardcore watching lots of Netflix the past few months. So that was awesome. Yeah. That's so the best twelve dollars we've spent. Yeah, totally. That month. has paid for itself mm-hmm. many times over so far. So uh, Stranger Things. Yes. We discovered Stranger Things. So what did it. you like the best about Stranger Things or the most? Um. Well, I liked all the. <laughs> 80s nostalgia, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my big thing. I'm, I am I love 80s music. Uh, who doesn't? But, you know, that brought me back to my childhood, not to date myself because I'm only 29 years old. Right, but, right. From yeah. what you heard of the 80s. Right. What from, you read in history books. Right. So. From what my mom told me of her childhood. Right. Um, yeah, the not 80s. Not actually history books, but Wikipedia, I guess. Right, yeah. Because right. nobody reads books anymore. Right. Except you. Except me. We'll get to that. 
<laughs> nice segue. That might be a good segue, actually. <laughs> so I discovered Frederick Bachman in 2017, he being the author of A Man Called Ove, oh, among okay. other things. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a movie. So it was a very good movie. Mm-hmm. It was in Swedish and it had subtitles, so I was able to understand everything. You know, sometimes you're watching a movie and it's like, what did he say? I, uh-huh. I didn't get that. But because of subtitles, you, you know, you can, as long as you can keep up. And mm-hmm. the subtitles were in English. They weren't in Swedish. Oh, well, that would, yeah, so that be was difficult good. to, <laughs> since neither one of us speaks Swedish. We would have understood, uh, understood like Saab and Volvo and yeah. Ikea. I, I know a couple Swedish swear words, so oh, I would have, yeah. I don't. Don't say them, though. Yeah, I was going to say, some of our tens of listeners maybe might be Swedish, well, and I don't want to offend them. We're so. huge in Sweden. That's true. Did I are. tell you that? We're huge in Sweden. Oh, we are. Yeah. Well, you've got a beard. You look kind of Viking-like. I, so. I, yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. But I like the A Man Called Ove because uh-huh. it was it was very true to the, the movie was very true to the book, and the book mm. was all about uh, being grouchy and don't you know judge a book by its cover. People have lots of things going on in their lives. Try to give them a little bit of, you know, cut them a little bit of slack, that sort of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, I did not read the book. I saw the movie. And for the first, say, 10 to 15 minutes of the movie, I told you this, uh, he was so unpleasant. Mm-hmm. I was like, I refuse to like this character. Yeah. I know they're going to try to redeem him because that's always what this kind of story is about. I'm not going to accept it because he's awful. And then at the end of the movie... Um, Don't spoil it. I... I cried. That's all I'm going to say. Did you cry, really? I, I shed a tear or two. Did you really? Yeah. I was a little choked up. Um, mm-hmm. And I think my uh, mother, who was watching with us, might have been a little bit sad about it, too. See, the uh, <laughs> If she could follow what was going on. Well, she could. She, because she asked a lot of questions, yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Uh, we love you, Ma. Um, <laughs> but the thing about the movie uh, and the book. So the book, he was a lot less likable for a lot more of the story. Mm -hmm. So I think that was probably the very nature of the medium that it was in. So the movie you want to, you don't want to have a guy not likable for the first half because people might bail, right? Yeah. It's a 90 minute, 90 minute movie. So yeah. Yeah. So he was less likable in the book, but, but there's also a lot of nuance in the book that they couldn't put in the movie, obviously. So that gives you hints that maybe he's not such a bad guy. So that was, that was a good discovery for 2017. We also had some good music discoveries in 2017. Yes. Uh, I in particular discovered Lord Huron. Mm-hmm. Love the Lord Huron. Me Hopefully too. Lord Huron will be releasing an album in 2018 or going on tour in 2018. Mm-hmm. Lord Huron, if you are listening. Please help. Please. <laughs> You're our only hope. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so yeah, Lord Huron uh, washed out. That was another big discovery. Sorry, uh, go back. Strange Trails was the name of the latest Lord Huron. Release, mm-hmm. um, and he is not on tour, as you mentioned. I think he's maybe got some dates in Europe coming up, but nothing yeah. in the states. Lord Huron, I would definitely stream his albums at work. I just sit there and just like listen to the albums over and over again. And now I kind of can't do that anymore because I have a coworker. <laughs> so what? Yeah. So I kind of don't listen to music anymore at work. But uh, yeah, Lord Huron. We love you. Lord Huron, and uh, I'm looking on the website now to see what else he's got released. And Only two albums. Only two albums. The other one is called Lonesome Dreams. Which I think is actually better yes. than the other one. That was his but, first one, correct? Yes. Yeah. But it's like the difference between like an A and a B. It's not like, oh, the first album was awesome and the second one was crap. Well, you know, you're looking at sophomore album right. slow down there, a mm-hmm. little bit of drop off, which usually happens, but... Uh, the thing that about Lord Huron I like, he's very uh, folky, very, but very not folky. He's mm-hmm. not too folky. Right. And also, he's not Canadian. You think with a name like Lord Huron, <laughs> he'd either be Canadian or British or something like that, but he's not. I never thought about that. Oh, that's, that, that's always my, my first inclination is, is the artist Canadian? And if they are, then I will support them blindly. Because Daltz is Canadian, if you haven't picked up on this. Yes, exactly. My, uh, my accent is... Uh, is a good uh, a good tale to tell on that one. I don't think you have much of an accent, though. Really? I don't think so. Okay, good. Maybe I'm just used to it, but you're used to it. He's from. Uh, he's based in L.A., Lord but I believe Huron. he actually is from Michigan originally. He's originally from Michigan. You're correct. Okemos, Michigan. I don't know where that is. Founding member member Ben Schneider is Lord Huron. Uh, and what else did you discover in uh, 2017? Uh, that was pretty much it. Just with Netflix, we've got a whole 
whole mess of uh, stuff that we can watch now. So a couple series, Mind Hunter, that's pretty good. We're watching that right now. A yep. couple episodes to go, liking it. And yep. uh, also Manhunt, the uh, Unabomber story that I believe originally aired on like the Discovery Channel. Mm-hmm. So That's right. Yeah. I, uh, that, was the, that was the biggest discovery for me was the streaming, I believe, mm-hmm. was the fact that Amazon Prime Video, Netflix, DirecTV Now, HBO Go, Kello Concerts, YouTube, and Hoopla, all those combined mm-hmm. are maybe $15 a month. You never have to leave your house. Never have to leave your house. <laughs> you Netflix and chill. And you can also <laughs> Amazon Prime Video and chill, DirecTV Now and chill. You do all sorts of things. You can cut the cord, uh, and it looks like a lot of people are cutting the cord and getting away with it, and mm-hmm. why not? Yeah. Why would you not want to? It's I, a good investment. Right. When you're spending $100 a month on cable. On channels you don't want. Yeah, on a bunch of channels you don't want. So Why wouldn't you do that? Right. It's the wave of the future. The last time I watched anything on network TV, well, I take it back. A couple weeks ago, we watched a Charlie Brown Christmas, which was on ABC. Um, and then the last time before that I watched anything on network TV might have been the Super Bowl. I'm going to call you out on that. Well, aside from Wheel of Fortune. No, like, not aside well. from. That's, <laughs> that's it. That's part of it. <laughs> well, but that's not, I mean, that's, it's not like a show, you know, like it's not a series. It's not a sitcom that. Well, the main reason you don't binge watch that on a service is because it's not on a service. Because it's not available on a service. Right. Exactly. If, if it were on a service, I would probably watch it elsewhere but i can't so our four cable channels that we get that's the main thing it's used for actually is jeopardy and wheel of fortune so there was (laughs) something else (laughs) something else in 2017 that wasn't so favorable that we discovered what was that long rumored now confirmed hollywood is a cesspool yes this is the year of the sex predator being outed which on the one hand, I'm kind of surprised it took this long for it to be outed because, I mean, I'm not in the entertainment industry at all. Not yet. But once we become huge, well, then we'll be... 2018. Right. Uh, but, I mean, I remember even back in the 90s, all the rumors about Hi- Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. So I'm kind of surprised it took this long. But at the same time, I'm not because that's just how <laughs> the patriarchy is set up. Right. So, yeah. yeah. I uh, I was astounded, but I shouldn't have been. I mean, it's long been the kind of place where it's all about how you look and mm. what you do for people and not necessarily based on talent. I'm not saying there aren't talented people in the industry, mm. but it seems like there are a lot of things going on behind the scenes that were affecting the product in terms of who got roles and who got this and who got that, more so than in any other industry. Right. Uh, <laughs> like, you're not going to be, you know, come and have an interview on my couch for this <laughs> particular role at the bank <laughs> well hopefully not i, I mean know, yeah. <laughs> i read a story the other day on the new york times uh, website about uh how sexual harassment and and that sort of uh, thing still exists in some corners uh, of the auto industry so oh, people uh-huh. on the lines and stuff yeah. like that on the assembly line are still women are still putting up with that kind of thing mm-hmm. so a month ago, I would have thought, what other industry is do, is tolerating this and would have put up with this as long as they did in Hollywood? Mm-hmm. But it sounds like other industries are putting up th- with this as well. I mean, I, I guess I've been sheltered in, mm-hmm. in a certain way to, to not experience that kind of thing. And being a white, middle-aged man... <laughs> helps I'm, you a lot. It helps me a lot. <laughs> You're at the top of the food chain. Right. And I'm, <laughs> I'm not doing anything, so mm-hmm. hopefully there's no skeletons out there that will come out of my closet, but <laughs> hopefully I'm clean. <laughs> right. Well, it's, it's not just harassment either. It's not just, like, groping and stuff. It's also... As a woman in all industries, you can be belittled and dismissed and ignored and talked down to. And if there's two people sitting at a desk, one's a woman, one's a man, and somebody wants one of you to go get coffee, the woman's going to be the one who's asked to go get coffee over the man. I, so, can still, I still yeah. can't believe that happens. That's just uh, It's 2017, and by the time people are listening to this podcast, 2018. Are we really talking about this stuff like still? Like that's yeah. that's brutal. That's so brutal. <laughs> yeah. And hopefully this is hopefully the silver lining out of this very dark cloud will be that it will clean up that industry so that it'll be safer for women and and anybody else who happens to feel disadvantaged by the previous regime and pre- previous approach. Mm-hmm. And it'll clean up Hollywood. Hopefully 
to a great extent. I mean, it sounds like it's pretty dirty right now. It sounds like there's a lot of cleaning up going on. Every day we're hearing about somebody new who's done something stupid. Hopefully it gets cleaned up. Right. I mean, you know, we'll see if this is just a momentary storm and then it's business as usual in three or six or 12 months or whatever. I mean, right. you know, there are some people who probably aren't going to be able to come back. Like Harvey Weinstein, right. I don't think he's going to be able to come back from this, but other people who aren't Weinstein-esque but still have problematic views, like, you know, are they just going to ride out the storm and then just go on about their business? So yeah. we shall see. Yeah. Time will be the ultimate judge of this. <laughs> Speaking of time. <laughs> it's time to move on to our next segment. It's time to move on to our next segment. <laughs> That's the best segue so far, I think. <laughs> Going from something nasty to optimistic future. <laughs> That's all we can do, right? That's all we can do. I mean, do. 2017 has been kind of like a garbage fire of a year. Yeah. So. Yeah. 2017 was not a great year in a lot of ways. Um, it wasn't as bad as 2016 in terms of losing celebrities and and rock stars and i mean we lost a lot of important people obviously but it seemed like 2016 was a bad year for that kind of thing remember Especially how we bad. thought 2016 was like such a horrible year and yeah. we were like god i can't wait for 2017 because it was just every week somebody was dying in 2016 right. Right. and then we actually got to 2017 it's like you know i would take 2016 again right. i would go back to that like yeah it can always be worse <laughs> don't don't say that it can always be worse it can find new and creative ways to be worse right. which so hopefully we're at the bottom yeah. And now 2018. So what are we looking forward to the most in 2018? <laughs> Please, Coco, give us some <laughs> optimism in some way. Well, we actually uh, did a modicum of research for this episode, what? which I'm, I'm sure our tens of listeners are finding very surprising <laughs> well, at this moment. Actually, our research department did a lot of research. <laughs> our, our research our department. Our crack research department. <laughs> and we found a list of all of the movies that are going to be released in 2018. Mm-hmm. And I am... Um, I'm very much looking forward to several of them, and I know that you are not, because most of them are like superhero movies, and that's not really your thing, so I apologize. Uh, it's true. I'm the more cultured of the two of us. You are. You're, yes. you're highbrow, and I'm low in brow. I'm sitting that's... in the back, <laughs> in the disdain section, <laughs> with my pipe and my... You're a grumpy cat I'm... at the Thor viewing. Like... <laughs> <laughs> I've seen this movie already. <laughs> Seven uh, times. How many times can he throw his hammer? Right. <laughs> Again with the hammer. What a surprise. <laughs> Nobody saw that coming. Yeah. <laughs> He's got one talent. Right. <laughs> oh, Loki did something bad. Oh. Here yeah. comes the hammer. Yeah. <laughs> so you're looking forward to a I non-hammer am. movie. <laughs> it's no longer hammer time in no. 2018. <laughs> uh, but yeah, they're all superhero movies. Uh The uh, Avengers Infinity War, Mm -hmm. which I am looking forward to because I thought uh, The Avengers Age of Ultron was a trash movie. Oh, really? I did. A trash movie? It was. It was trash. So, um, yeah. So I'm looking forward to Infinity War. Hopefully that doesn't suck. What's the premise? Um, Do you know what the premise is? So bad guys come, (laughs) Avengers... Come save the world and save the world, and but there's a lot of building destruction, destruction in the middle. Yeah, I think you described it. Oh, okay. Um, also, uh, tension. Yeah, speaking of Marvel, Black Panther. Oh yeah, I'm very much looking forward to Black well, so Panther. The Avengers movie May 4th is when yes. that's coming out. Okay. Black Panther February 16th. February 16th. Looking forward to that. Um, okay, who's in the Black Panther movie? Chadwick Boseman, mm-hmm. who has been in uh, 42. He played Jackie Robinson. Mm-hmm. He was also James Brown. In, oh, uh, cool! Yeah, yeah. I thought he did. Now, re- music, I can relate to that. Yeah, definitely. I thought he did a really good job in that. So I and, think he's a very good actor. And where is Malcolm X in all this? <laughs> no, it's not the Black Panthers. It's oh, okay. Black Panther. It's a superhero. All right. Yeah. So, what about you? What are you looking forward to? Is there anything on that list that you are actually looking forward? I'm to? looking at the list that we compiled with, uh, or that our crack uh, research <laughs> staff has just handed me. This this just in. It's on a very complicated piece of paper. <laughs> I swear, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, so, Mission Impossible Six. Are, are you looking forward to that, though? No, but I want to make fun of it. Okay, good. <laughs> so, July twenty seventh, Tom Cruise, who's sixty seven years old now, isn't he? He's got to be. <laughs> yeah. He's he's older than I am. Yeah, he is older than you are. Not and, that you're. I mean, you're thirty nine because I'm twenty nine. But so. he, I'm taller than him. I do know that. I'm taller than him. What are you talking <laughs> about? I'm five seven. Come on. Oh. No, he's six foot seven because we're going to get sued if. We... Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. All right, so let's not know. talk about Tom Cruise's height. Let's talk about his acting talents. So he's now <laughs> in the sixth 
Mission Impossible. So the first one, I liked. I liked the first one. It was in Australia. It was uh, the, the... Wasn't it in Australia? Was that one in Australia or was the second one in Australia? Oh. We need to get the crack research team on I, I, So I, I surprised the crack research team. I went in the direction that I didn't tell them I was going yeah. in earlier. So the one that was in Australia, I oh. liked. Maybe that was uh, that Mission Impossible 2. One. And it had a really good soundtrack. It had Powderfinger on the soundtrack, mm-hmm. which is a really cool Australian band. So that's why I liked that one that was in Australia. Daltz is really into music, so we're going to be talking about music a lot. Apparently. So the uh, I, I could buy him in those days, so that was like, what, 15 years ago or something like it? 20 years ago? 20 uh, years the ago. first Mission Impossible came out, I believe, uh, I'm only 29, remember this. Cracks research my, uh, staff, alert. <laughs> my first year of college, I believe, so that would have been like 95. So that's more than 20 years ago. Yeah, that's 22, almost 23 years ago now. 23 when we're listening to this right. podcast. When our tens of listeners in Sweden are... <laughs> God, what the hell did I get? <laughs> are drinking Aquavit and you know, listening to our podcast. <laughs> Eating herring, you know. <laughs> Stereotypes galore. Yeah. That's we, what we're all about here. We love you, Sweden. Don't hate us, Sweden. Um, the uh, the other thing that I liked about Mission Impossible is I loved the series. So I'm old enough oh, to okay. have seen the series on TV. Wow. You know what a TV is, right? <laughs> and, and like network TV, you know what that is? With the rabbit ears. And, right, right, yeah. yeah. And it used to come on, the reruns used to come on every Saturday afternoon at like 2 o'clock wow. where I lived in mm-hmm. suburban Toronto. And I would sit there and watch it with my dad and we thought it was the coolest thing because it was like MacGyver. Oh, yeah. In those days. Like, mm-hmm. I, it's not as much. The movies aren't as much like that as, as mm-hmm. the series was in those days. But the series in those days was like, what's he going to do? He's only got a stick of gum and, <laughs> and a and, shoelace. And a shoelace. <laughs> and how is he? Like, it was totally MacGyver. <laughs> yeah. and, but it was a team of MacGyvers. It was mm-hmm. a lot. And there was, you know, there was no Tom Cruise kind of guy. There was, mm-hmm. uh, there was the burly weightlifter guy. Mm-hmm. There was the African-American guy. There was the white mastermind and his wife, I think. The white mastermind? Mm. Well, no, but in a good mastermind kind of way. He, oh, okay. was, he was congenial. Oh, okay. So, um, <laughs> that makes it better. <laughs> but the tape always self destructed oh, uh-huh. after the instructions. And it was really cool that it did that in those mm. days because it was a reel to reel. Oh, it was an actual cassette tape. Right. Like, wow. But not cassette tape, but like a reel to reel. Oh, you know, like okay. The, with uh-huh. the wheels and everything like that. Wow. So it was pretty cool. So I'm, I'm not looking forward to that. Uh, I wanted to make fun of Mission Impossible 6 because I can't believe they're making six of them and Tom Cruise is still going. Yeah, I, yeah. I, and Jack Reacher? Yeah. And The Mummy? Like, is he making the same movie and just calling it different things now? He, yeah, he pretty much is. And uh, I believe there's also a Top Gun sequel coming right, out. Right, yeah. Like. What about Goose? Where's Goose? <laughs> Goose is dead, right? Goose is. Is yeah. cooked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need some sound effects. Wah, wah. I think Garage Band. I think Garage Band does have sound effects, right? Okay. Well, if we could figure out how to do that, we'll load that up. When we'll get our crack engineering staff on yes, that. Our Next crack time. editing team. The, the people that are on the board right now, watching <laughs> yeah. in the control room yeah. as we're doing with this. the little knobs, right? And the lights flashing on the air. Yeah. Uh, what about the new uh, Han Solo debacle? Yeah, I. I mean, it's going to make a ton of money, right? Because it's. Han hands. Solo, who is beloved. Sorry, and Han. I have to keep... Yeah. I don't say Han. So. And uh, it's Star Wars, which right. is also a thing, but... What's the backstory there? Uh, so the original directors got fired. Uh, directors? Yeah, directors got fired. It wasn't the Wachinsky brothers or something like that, was it? No, it was two guys whose names I don't remember because our crack research team is We awful. sprung that on them. Well. <laughs> yeah. They're scrambling right now in the back. I know who replaced them, though. Ron Howard replaced them. See, now so, that's not my first pick. I know. you. I don't know if... Yeah, so... I love Ron Howard. I love Backdraft. Mm-hmm. I loved uh, Night Shift. <laughs> I think it's some Ron Howard movies. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Did you like Happy Days? Like, was that a... <laughs> oh, yeah, but he wasn't directing it. Well, yeah. So so he got brought on to replace the directors. And plus, there's also uh, the kid who's playing young Han Solo. Oh, yeah. So what's the deal here? Uh, an acting coach got brought in <laughs> for him well into filming, which is, yeah, not a good sign. So I'm thinking this is going to be another trash fire. Um Probably not going to be very good, but I mean, we're probably going to go see it because it's Han Solo and it's a Star Wars movie. And so it's uh, called Solo, 
colon, a Star Wars story. Oh, so like Rogue One, colon, a Star Wars story. So it's very catchy with the title. Yeah. And you know what's going on. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ron Howard replaced directors Phil Lord and Christopher Miller. Okay. So that's what happened there. Okay. Not the brothers. Not the Wachowski brothers. Yeah. yeah. So... They uh, did... Were those the guys who did The Matrix? Yes. Okay. Those are the only actor brother or director brothers I could think of. So also made by Ron Howard lately, Mm -hmm. just as a refresher. (laughs) Oh, God. The Dark Tower. Oh, one of the worst movies of 2017, according to the Toronto Globe and Mail. Star. Okay. Same thing. Uh, Inferno, (laughs) which was, sounds vaguely familiar like Backdraft. Is Inferno the adaptation of the Dan Brown book? Yes. Okay, there we go. That's what it is. You're right. Okay. Also, he made Curious George 3, Back to the Jungle. <laughs> Which I haven't seen. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah. Oh, he was an executive on that one. So oh, okay. Not, he's not a director. These are all the movies he was involved in. Uh, Curious George 2, Follow That Monkey. Angels and Demons he made. Frost Nixon was a good movie. Oh, that was a really good movie. Yeah, yeah. So let's go far back to see what the best movie it was. You know who I think is an underrated actor, speaking of Frost Nixon? Michael Sheen. He's, oh, yeah. He's a very good actor. He is a good actor. And yep. he never gets any props for anything. So he's so versatile. I, I quite like him. He was Frost in that. He was. Right? And, uh, I saw that. That was good. Um, that guy who's always a D-bag was Nixon. And I can't remember his name. That narrows it down. Frank Langella. There we go. Oh, Frank Langella. <laughs> yeah, yeah that was really go. good. That was really good. So his... his <laughs> that narrows it down. <laughs> so he made Cinderella Man. Oh, Great okay. movie. Uh, a Beautiful Mind. Yeah, also I a that great one. movie. Yeah. Um, but you have to go back far, right? Apollo 13, he made. Yeah, like that, the 90s was his heyday. Yeah, the 90s were Ron Howard. Okay, so I said Backdraft. 1991, he made Backdraft. Yeah, I was in high school when that came out. Parenthood. When Billy Baldwin was a heartthrob. He made three movies in 1988, or was associated with three movies Willow, Vibes, and Clean and Sober. I've heard of one of them. Night Shift was 1982. So the two movies that I thought of when I thought of Ron Howard, <laughs> 1991 and 1982. So what we're saying is we're really not looking forward to Solo, a Star Wars story. <laughs> it seems and yet, like it's rife for disaster. And yet Disney is going to take our money anyways. Right. It's going to so. take a lot of our money. Although we have not actually seen The Last Jedi yet. Oh, yes. Which we need to see in a couple weeks. We will see that Um, soon. Yeah. I don't like going to movies like that on opening weekend because the theaters tend to be way too crowded, and I don't love that. So I I like to wait for movies like this, like a few weeks, because you know they're still going to be in theaters. Right. So that's that's the method to my madness. I think that's good madness, and that's good method. Thanks. Um, Any other movies we are looking forward to seeing? Uh, So Spider-Man with uh, uh, Lee Schreiber. Liev Schreiber. Yeah. He's a solid actor. I thought the uh, Spider-Man Homecoming that came out this year, I enjoyed that. that. Yeah. You did not look as though you enjoyed that when we were in the theater. Because you don't like superhero movies. I was on my phone. You were. You were, like, looking at Facebook. You were. Uh, Yeah. Oh, speaking of looking at Facebook. Yes. um, Deadpool 2 is also coming out this year, which I know everybody freaking loves Deadpool because he cusses. Um, He's vulgar. Yeah, but I didn't. I didn't love the first movie. There, there were moments when I thought it was quite funny. Yeah. But yeah. then there were other moments where I thought it just went on too long and it was just trying too trying hard. Too hard yeah. And I would pick up my phone and I would look at Facebook. So, so any movie with Canadian Ryan's in it, I'll pretty much see. <laughs> so we're gonna go see Deadpool too, is what you're saying? Ryan Reynolds, okay. Ryan Gosling, yeah, both okay. uh, solid actors. Mm-hmm. Ryan uh, Gosling was good in Blade Runner 2049, which you saw twice. Which I saw twice because I was skeptical, and I went back the second time to see if I was actually right the first time. Um, we've already done our review, so I don't want to talk too much about that, but any of the Ryans, I will I will go see. You didn't talk about Blade Runner in the 2017 No, but we movie. talked about 2017. Oh, okay. All right. So I don't, want to, I don't want to confuse people with the chronology <laughs> of our podcast. Our tens of drunken Swedish listeners just can't follow. <laughs> They're at home charting out what we're talking about. <laughs> They've got graph paper. Wait a minute. They're going back. How can I? And at this point, you have one of your Swedish swear words coming appropriately. But uh, I know that uh, I'm not looking forward to... uh, Well, no, I am looking forward to uh, Liev Schreiber in the Spider-Man movie because he was good in Goon. He... (laughs) 
<laughs> he was really good in Goon. Didn't you think he was good in Goon? That I was, bought him as a hockey player in Goon. That was a uh, that was a discovery on the Netflix this year. Was, that was was Goon. I I thought that was a very very funny movie. Did I, you like it? Yeah. I, I went into it not knowing anything about it except that it was going to be about hockey, and yeah. I enjoyed it. I thought Liev Schreiber did a good job. Yeah. I thought uh, Stifler did a good job. Right. Uh, <laughs> Sean Michael. Sean William Scott. Sean William Scott. <laughs> Jan Michael Gamble. So. <laughs> Jan Michael Vincent. Yeah. For those who were born in 1940, that'll be a funny joke. Yeah. So my dad will laugh at yeah, that. That's what you're saying. Your dad got that joke. If my dad knows what podcasts are, so <laughs> which I don't think he does, but that's okay. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. So Liev Schreiber is a is a very good actor, and yeah, he was really good in Spotlight. He Have was you seen Spotlight. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we should put that on our watch list because I've that never this seen afternoon, it. Yeah, because <laughs> I think we should watch that. It's been about three weeks since we watched it, so <laughs> yeah. since we watched it last. Yeah, that wasn't uh, that was a great movie for 2016. That was yeah. a release in 2016, right? It, Oscar? No, it, I believe it was released in 2015 because I think it won oh, the yeah. best picture Oscar in 2016. Yeah. So, yeah, really good movie. Yeah, which is understating it but okay what journalism could and should be and is no longer right and it's very nostalgic look Mm -hmm. back at journalism because they're not doing that kind of journalism anymore nobody like maybe some of the big papers still are like the new york times and the and the the post and the post and the washington post not the new york post (laughs) (laughs) the new york post yeah the new york times and washington post and maybe the la times and right journalism is not what it used to be and it was sort of like a, like I said, it was nostalgic, but it was one of those movies that brought a tear to my eye, even though it wasn't a sad story. Right. And sort of look back on on journalism and what we used to do. Mm-hmm. Which is why All the President's Men is also on our watch yes. list. Yes. Yeah. Yes. But that's a segment for another podcast, I think. <laughs> is that the official wrap it up uh, signal? Well, I don't know. We're going on uh, 97 minutes now for our Are podcast. Are you serious? <laughs> It's like, that's the fastest 97 minutes ever. Well, that's what they say. It's the fastest 97 minutes ever. That's our marketing. Oh, okay. So anyway, (laughs) we're going to wrap this up. Okay. Please join us again (laughs) next time for the Coco and Daltz podcast. I'm not Coco. And I'm not Daltz. And we'll talk to you next time.